All right, folks. The Cheeto SBG Tier 7 Normal Japanese Tank Destroyer, practically a Yak Cheeto, or more correctly, when I think about it, a Sturm Cheeto. The Yak Panzer IV is flatter and smaller than a Sturm Panzer IV, also known as the Bombard. So this thing has a larger superstructure for a medium tank chassis. It has 250 millimeters for the hull front, and that's likely only for the mantlet. The rest is possibly 75, like with the Cheetos, but looks half decent. Commander Cupola weak spot. It is like a mini version, bite size of a Yak Tiger design, so cute, I guess. But yeah, it's not a half bad looking sniper of a tank destroyer with armor. Also what's interesting is they kept the bow machine gun for the radio operator on the wrong side of the vehicle because Japanese people drives on the wrong side. <laughs> it's also in line with the medium tanks. Yeah, they have it on the wrong side. Interesting. Not a half bad looking vehicle and it's a large caliber gun, 105, but that's the same ballpark with other tank destroyers at tier 7. So penetration is alright. Gold shell is AP, so below average pin, but you have the normalization, I think, for a gold shell. 320 alpha is the average for 105s at tier 7s. DPM is actually not bad. About 2400 with a 100% crew. So with a rammer, that's about 2700. Pretty decent. Aim time is quick. Accuracy is decent with a 100% crew, about 0.33. 7 degrees of gun depression, 15 elevation, nice, I mean, especially with a fixed mounted gun, it's no T25 AT, but it works, 10 degrees per side, standard, gun traverse speed, nothing to talk about there, 40 rounds of the 105, not bad, full crew of 5, 40 kilometers per hour top speed, not the fastest, but it is based off of the Cheeto, so, a little bit slower compared to something of a T25 slash 2 or T25 AT. But horsepower per ton ratio is alright. 15 horsepower per ton is medium tank. And hull traverse is okay enough. 32 degrees per second. 1000 health. That's a lot of health for a tier 7 tank destroyer. That's about the same as a lowly armored tier 8. Like a Romantel Borsig or something. That's not half bad, and 250 for the hull front, but likely only for the mantlet. It's likely 75 for the actual hull armor compared to the superstructure. 45 at the sides, don't side scrape, it's trash. And 37 meters of view range, decent enough. Radio is standard, but this vehicle actually seems the most reasonable one out of all of them. It seems the best performing compared to the tier 8, tier 9, and tier 10. You might have the most fun in this one, but that's a baby gun. <laughs> Look at this little baby gun. That's so cute. Oh, is it a freaking 90 or 75? Oh my gosh. That is small. <laughs> I mean, usually the stock grind on the Japanese tank destroyers are pretty decent. You get about the same penetration as a top gun, which is surprising, but just a little bit less alpha. So, 200mm pin for the stock gun, not bad, just lower alpha. So this thing is more like a 90mm. Pretty perform good performing pin for a 90, holy crap. Gold shell is not bad for the 90 stock gun. Yeah, what? It's a 75? I thought it was a 90mm. That's one of the best performing 75s with like 200mm of pin, holy crap, that is pretty good. Especially with the Alpha, usually 75mm are about 150 Alpha, like with the the Yak Panther. That is, in, that is insane stock gun when I think about it, holy crap. And you research a bunch of radios, <laughs> and luckily the radios are shared? Yeah, it's shared on the Cheery. No, that's the Tank Destroyer. Type 4 Cheeto, Type 4 Heavy. It's shared on the heavy tank, the Ho Oho, Cheeto SBG, the Hori 2, Hori 1. They didn't put the Type 5 Chiri in front. Maybe it was the same with the, with the medium tanks. Alright, just research the radio. 
You can mount it, I think, if you already unlock it. But yeah, stock grind is not bad. You already have the good pin, you just need more alpha. And you don't get a DPM boost, you just get better, penet uh, better alpha and slightly better penetration. Just slightly, but accuracy gets worse, you get better aim time out of it too. Alright, so not a bad vehicle. And let's take a look at the stock configuration with the 75 to the fully upgraded one with the 100% crew. So DPM doesn't get changed that much, it's 2500 almost, which is pretty good. With the rammer, that's about 2800. Accuracy on the stock 75 is pretty decent. Aim time is not as good for a 75, but it gets upgraded once you reach the 105. Accuracy takes a hit, but that's still pretty good accuracy for a 105. And it still has the gun depression, gun elevation, and side traverse angles. 250 at the hull front, yada yada. Horsepower per ton ratio when stock is kind of bad, so you might want to put some investment to the engine first, then the actual gun. You already have the pin, just don't have the alpha, so I think you want to have the mobility first and boost up by like what? Freaking <laughs> 4 horsepower per ton ratio with the track, so might want to consider the actual engine first. Camo is actually not half bad for such a large vehicle superstructure. It's like a close to a fat medium tank or fat light tank, excuse me. <laughs> It's like a T-54 lightweight. Close. Well, it's no AMX 13s, obviously, but not half bad for such a large superstructure. View range is standard. It actually might be the best out of all of the Japanese tank destroyers we have seen so far. I mean, we haven't covered the tier 6 and tier 5s yet, but out of the higher tiers, this one for the middle tier is pretty decent when I think about it. I mean, Compared to the Horis, yeah, the Horis are big, and this one's disappointing compared to the Kari. This one only has a 120 compared to the 127, so bias towards premium. <laughs> this one seems large with a rear mounted superstructure. This one has been artificially aspect ratio to be a larger size, but these seems average on paper. They might perform well, but it might be fading into the dust like with the Chinese tank destroyers <laughs> that nobody gives a, gives a crap about but this thing seems like a 6, 6.5 out of 10. You have some situa uh, situational armor to protect you from random shots but the gun performs like with any other 105mm. About the same DPM, about the same accuracy, a little bit worse, a little bit better aim time I guess. Well then again I have a crew. Uh, gun depression is only 7 compared to 8 on the Yak Panther. And penetration is about the same. This thing has 10 degrees of gun depression. So, well, you do have 2 more millimeters of pin, but why is the DPM so low on this thing? So, DPM is actually not half bad. Uh, this thing's, <laughs> this thing's not it. <laughs> this is a 32 pounder. Okay. Yeah, this thing is a 90mm. <laughs> you cannot compare a 90mm, this is a medium tank. <laughs> so actually the gun is kind of a better performing 105 when I think about it at tier 7. Yeah, this 105, it, it's a situational 105 for the Italian. It's also a assault gun, not a sniper. Well, 90 with high pin for the Scorpion. Hellcat is also a 90. Yeah, it's not a bad. 105 for a freaking tier 7 with that high of a DPM. Penetration is about the same as a Yak Panther, but you will want Rammer. Likely, I'll still go with sniping capabilities. So basically, binoculars and camouflage net. You don't have to be that aggressive with this vehicle. You have the situational armor to protect you, but it's like with a Yak Panther, you're not front lines most of the time. Unless you're like against tier 5s or something. So likely rammer, binoculars, and camouflage net. Field mods are pretty simple for lower tiers. So always choose this one. This one's a no-brainer. This one's so good compared to this garbage. Only hull traverse. And that's not even effective hull traverse. So garbage, throw that away. 
Um, accuracy or aim time? Accuracy. If you're sniping, aim time's already good enough. Yeah, aim time's already very good enough. It's two seconds on paper at below two. Quick refresh, 1.9. Yeah, just go with better accuracy at the cost of some aim time, up to like two seconds. And camouflage after you fire or actual view range. View range. <laughs> no question about it. Camouflage after you fire is already garbage enough. So, yeah, you're sniping. You're, you should be sniping, I think. So, probably a 6. Maybe 6.5 out of 10. It's a little bit better than the higher tiers, from what I believe. And, obviously, perform a little bit better as a sniper and sniping camping bastard than a large ass hori for that matter so i'm thinking it's decent 6.5 maybe 6 it's not half bad you have some armor to prevent being just strafed with random shells but 6 6.5 well there you go folks the cheeto spg so we're likely going to see the japanese tank destroyers possibly starting spring around may or april i'm guessing possibly may so march is 1.20 and likely april is the common test so i'm guessing around may so late spring early summer ish of japanese tank destroyers and we're likely going to see the heavy tanks around august or september or october or so but we'll have to see well as always thank you guys for watching this video hopefully you guys enjoyed it i'll see you guys next time peace Starry night Paint your palette blue and gray Look out on a summer's day With eyes that know the darkness in my soul